one of the most beautiful aspects in our lord's life is that independent of what state you are independent of who you are there's always an example for you in our lord if you uh, are yes. if you are poor if you are a beggar our lord he went to egypt like a fugitive it would be against humility for her to become a beggar she yeah. wasn't called for that sure. exactly she was yeah. called to be a nun to live in a convent not to live on the road begging humility is recognize yourself as a creature because deep inside whenever we make an act of pride in mm. some point we want to put ourselves in god's place very 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 few people can say that they actually have the virtue of humility yeah. and the ones that say they have the virtue most of them don't have don't it. have it. <laughs> why didn't the evangelist right say something about it why is it hidden why is it a hidden life yeah it could have i don't know our, our lady could have told them something about it and they could have it down it, it would have made our life so, um, so much easier i mean <laughs> <laughs> it would have made the podcast so much easier we would guess it if we had something to talk about <laughs> salve maria and welcome to Mary a Queen the podcast of the Slaves of Our Lady. We have once again with us brother Pinio Bassi. Salve Maria, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be back with you all. And brother Nimish who's normally behind the cameras, he decided to come in front again once again. <laughs> Salve Maria. So, since it's we are still at the beginning of 2024, um we have a special podcast today to help us to help us prepare better for this year. One of the questions that we get quite often one of the difficulties that people ask us ask for prayers ask for counsel etc is on the virtue of humility how to be humble so we had the idea of doing a podcast this time on speaking about humility but not about the virtue abstractly but speaking about it applied in a very concrete and a very mysterious case that is the hidden life of jesus as we know that our lord was born he just finished christmas we know that he started his public life at 30 years of age but what happened in all these years that we don't know about what what mysteries took place these mysteries have a lot of lessons for us about humility and that's what we'll be talking about today so brother plinio yes so yeah so yeah so let's try to take it from there our lord jesus christ can we make it very simple our lord is very humble it was it would be a proud thing for him to appear for him to do apostolate so he was so humble that he did not want to do any ministry before he was 30 years of age because of pure humility so anybody who does apostolate is not being humble is that it is that where we're going to get it today at the end of the day i mean i'm really really the end of the podcast already <laughs> no i don't think so if i understood your your question properly you're saying so you're saying that the most important thing or not the most important thing but to do upon, humility to is to, humility is to, is to is disappear is to, is to hide to because that's why jesus had a hidden life is that true And no. then in his public life, he he stopped being humble, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, then then he gave up. I mean, thirty years he got fed up, and then he became proud. Is that it? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> well, what I think we could say about his hidden life and his humility is that for thirty years he wanted to prepare himself for his public life, mm-hmm. and preparing himself through a life of humility, through a life of especially humility of not wanting to put himself, even though he had. all the right to put himself of course he was god man he was god but he wanted to give us the example of not putting himself in the center of everything that was happening hmm because the true humility is to not put yourself in the center yeah many times people want to show themselves show themselves as being humble <laughs> so they put themselves in the center as being somebody that doesn't do anything or being somebody that doesn't saying that he doesn't have any any virtues or any any abilities but the truth is he's still putting himself in the center yeah it's not quite it's not oh, difficult to find people who talk <laughs> about themselves oh how i am a horrible person and who oh, i am a sinner and who oh, but the whole time he's talking about i or she's talking about i or oh, see how i i i i mean that's not humility humility is not to is not to speak evil about yourself is not to speak about yourself and not necessary i guess but then brother plinium or brother yeah. which let's uh, switch now <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness a lot a lot was god he was he is the center of the universe we sin when we have we are proud we because we are putting ourselves in a place which is not us we don't belong in the center we are creatures we should not put ourselves in the role of the creator but a lot is a creator and wasn't it wrong him not putting himself in the center the whole time being hiding himself when he should have uh yes he was god but uh he also became man he became a creature he took on a, a, the form of a creature his body was created his soul was created and 
I was not going to enter in this aspect of of the, the kind of paradox between God and man, uh, but it's interesting because uh, he could have become, he could have taken uh, he could have taken flesh uh, in some other manner. He didn't have to be born a baby and grow up, etc., etc. Yeah. So he chose uh, to go through all of that kind of formation, and we see in the Bible it says that Jesus. That's the last thing we heard about him after after the tw- after the finding in the temple. Yeah, he grew. Uh, he grew in wisdom, stature, and favor and grace in the sight of God and the sight of man. Yeah. Uh, he had to grow. He had to. He chose to grow. It's not that he he he, he didn't required. I mean, he, he didn't require to uh, to like a. F- Develop, I develop guess. humility. Yes, he didn't require to develop develop humility, humility. But he chose it. He wanted uh, k- kind of to to be that first, uh, be that example for us. That was actually a discussion that we and had the other day, when when they were asking if our Lord had grace or not. How was grace in our Lord? Yeah. And one yeah. of one of the one of the actually the teachers in Christology, he said no, but. It says in the gospel that our Lord grew in grace. Yeah, He grew in grace, yeah. yeah. Why? Because, like you said, he wanted to be man and to be totally man. He wanted to be fully man. And being fully man includes his spiritual life, being the spiritual life of a man as well. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. So, of course, not necess- it wasn't necessary for him to receive grace to to grow in grace because he, being God, was was sanctity. Not that he was holy, not that he was a saint, but he was sanctity. But he wanted to grow in sanctity as a man as well. Yes, uh, I think he did that so that uh, he was like uh, living all of our lives, the, I mean, uh, the life of the whole church. He was living it in himself, like kind of conquering all of these steps that all of us have to conquer. He was doing it for us. So when we, when I, for me, I've, when I have to grow in my humility, it's not I who do it. It's our Lord who did it for me. He already <laughs> did it. I'm just participating in that action, that, that, that yeah. growing up. Right? That's I don't very know, beautiful. No. It's what I think St. Paul or St. Peter, in one of the letters, I don't remember that, say that, that our Lord became like us in everything except sin. except sin. Yes. So everything includes the practice of virtue. Yeah. And Receiving even, graces. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, like, <laughs> <laughs> but even the, the struggle to practice the virtues. Yeah. A lot of yeah. to a, go to a, the a, na- a, natural, a natural struggle, of course, yeah. Yeah. Order, but, yeah. but a, a struggle to practice virtue, to give us the example. Of course, he did not have the bad inclinations that we have in our soul, which come from original sin. Right. But he had temptations, so much so that we know about the temptations he suffered in the desert. He had temptations from outside his nature. The demon could tempt him. And that did happen. And his own nature sometimes recoiled against some aspects of his own mission. Like in the agony in the garden, that was a fight as well. So much so that the word agony in Greek it does not have the same meaning that we have it commonly in English today. Mm. Agony in English is, I mean, English and Portuguese and most of the languages today, agonia. It means uh, the last struggle before the person dies. So he's in his agony. He's going through this extreme suffering and he dies. That's agony. Yeah. But in Greek, agony is a very fierce fight. It doesn't have to be before a person dies. So agony in the garden, in the original sense, as it was written, is the fight in the garden. Yeah, Our Lord because his agony, his agony was on the cross. Yeah, he didn't struggle. die. Then. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't, he it didn't. was a fight that he enfronted against himself, against... Let's see, not against himself, no, but against the, his nature, crying against the mission that he had to fulfill, against the devil his who instincts. was yeah. against his instincts, yeah. exactly. So Allah in that, exactly, he decided, he wished to go through a struggle, he wished to, wished to go through a fight. Then again, the temptation in the desert. As God, he could have prohibited the demon like this. I mean, the demon would not tempt him anymore. Yes. And everything the demon asked him to do were not sins. I mean, asked him to turn rocks into bread. That's totally legitimate. It would not be a sin for him. Even if the demon had the last temptation when he asked to be adored, for him that would not be a sin. I mean, for anybody else in the world that would be a sin. For him, not even that would be a sin. Mm-hmm. But then Allah wished to go to the struggle and to resist it like a man, as a man. He, he was a man. He resisted it as a man to give us an example. And like Branham said, so that when we get there, when we go through this, we have mm-hmm. this example of somebody who already 
fought for us who have already conquered monsieur john um the founder of the heralds he says that once in a while when he's going goes through a very deep struggle when he goes through something very difficult to do he goes to the chapel looks at the blessed sacrament and says my lord remember that you also had the same flesh that i have today <laughs> because what i'm going through i know that you went through i know that you struggled and you conquered so help me interesting wow i guess for humility that's one of the most in a certain sense saint thomas says and uh, other saints concord that so here the highest virtue is not humility the highest virtue is charity is very love god directly yes. but in a certain sense the most important virtue is humility because without that everything else will fall apart only when you have humility all the other virtues enter into their place and it's the hardest virtue to conquer yeah believe it or not other other virtues might seem to be harder yeah but they only seem to be harder when you don't pay attention to your own humility <laughs> because when you pay attention to see if you're humble truly humble or not you notice that very 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 few people can say that they actually have the virtue of humility yeah and the ones that say they have the virtue most of them don't have don't it. have it. <laughs> it's very so subtle it's it's yeah. very it's a very difficult virtue to 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 acquire truly to to practice it for for real to actually have the real virtue of of humility so our lord practiced this virtue and he conquered this virtue not that he ever had pride from the first moment of his conception he had perfect humility but he fought in this virtue grew in this virtue as well if he grew in everything if yes. he grew in perfection mm-hmm. of course so Very interesting <laughs> the let's see let's see that we can we can speak about i guess two two aspects of humility that we can see in our lord's life one in his hidden life and one in his public life because true humility this saint teresa of avila uh, and many other saints but especially saint teresa puts it very well humility is the truth so when somebody who 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 does not have let's say somebody who has never robbed in his life and the person says just to be humble before others oh i am a terrible thief i robbed robbed many times he's not being humble he's being a liar he's offending god hmm. i mean true humility is the truth the only humility is the truth the humility for uh, a nun as saint therese was to be a perfect nun and not to demean herself below, beyond uh, below the dignity that is required of a nun if she did not respect her own her own vocation her own habit her own she practiced perfect poverty in her in her convent and yet she demanded that all her sisters keep an impeccable habit without the least stain and in spite of all the poverty all of them had authorization to have a have a uh um let's say a bottle a, a jar of perfume in their cells so they had poor mm. they had poverty for everything else but a small fracas perfume would, would not offer in poverty for her because it was yes. dignifying herself making man and woman of course in that case more like angels so that's not yeah. against humility also that's a it would be against humility for her to become a beggar exactly. to go to the road she yeah. wasn't called for that yeah, she wasn't called for that calling attention to herself exactly now. she was yeah. called to be a nun to live in a convent not to live on the road begging yeah and so but she, it would seem as somebody that would doesn't know the real humility would think oh humility is to make myself the lowest person on on earth if you're not called to be the lowest person on earth humility yeah. isn't to be the lowest person on earth yeah and normally when people if you don't want to be the lowest person on earth is desperate to call attention on being the lowest person on earth all the time <laughs> i remember once reading the life of saint basil saint basil the great the father of the church he um, the, he was all he had the fame of being a saint there was a hermit at his time who used to live in a desert in a cave totally unknown and this hermit had visions of god he used to have conversations uh, with his angel and all that and he had many supernatural communications so this man uh, hearing about the fame of saint basil went to cesarea is that where he was i don't know i'm not sure i'm i'm thinking it's cesarea or something anyway uh, he went to sir, the basil of saint uh, the diocese of saint basil and when he arrived they were having a super solemn procession so many altar boys faithful incense uh, splendorous vestments in the middle of all this was the bishop he was a bishop in the middle of all that splendor in the middle of all that pomp and this hermit got offended yeah this is ridiculous man this man is not a saint mm. i came here to see a saint and we'll see how 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 much richness how much splendor he has this is not true sanctity opulence yeah. opulence yeah and then he turned his back and like i said he had visions he used to communicate with god and he heard god's voice in his ears my son you are more attached 
to the tail of your cat than he is to all this. Cuz he used to live in a cave <laughs> in the desert but he had a pet cat and he used to spend his time instead of when he ought to be praying playing with his cat and he was super attached to that cat. Saint Basil did all that glory. He assumed all that glory because he was prince of the church he was a bishop that was not for him that was for God. And he went to heaven. Let's pray that this hermit of course converted with this went to heaven as well but <laughs> I'm sure he things did. Things are not as simple as they yeah. as they seem in yes. there. And I think that's like what Bernard Mis said I mean one of the most beautiful aspects in our lord's life is that independent of what state you are independent of who you are there's always an example for you in our lord if you uh, are yes. if you are poor if you are a beggar our lord he went to egypt like a fugitive without any money without any food without any they suffered a lot they were almost reduced to the condition of beggars of course for our lord to be born saint joseph had to beg ask for a place yes. for our lord to be born he didn't find it yes. he went through the condition of uh, menial labor He had to work as a carpenter. He was Saint Joseph's helper. Yeah, and who knows if at certain moments he would do more than Saint Joseph. Yeah, mm-hmm. Saint Joseph was tired. That would would make sense also as he grew don't older. Know, exactly. Don't know how how old Saint Joseph was when he died, but yeah. certainly a little bit before his death, who had to take care of the carpenter shop was probably our Lord. Yeah, yeah. You know, so he gave us this example, but then again he gives us the example of saying that I am king. He said that. Yes. He first spoke to the multitudes. He said that to Pilate in the mm-hmm. Are you king? You say so. Yes, I am king. You said, yeah, you yeah. said it. Yeah. You have said it. Uh, he spoke that, and when he would treat the kings, when he would treat the, he would always speak from a high viewpoint, and to anybody, in fact, he would be, yes. he would, he could talk to somebody, a beggar, a leprous person. He would talk like a father. He would, but he would talk from from above. He would talk condescendingly, and he would talk in the same way when he would talk to a king. And when you talk with the Pharisees, who are the who are yeah, the the elite, the elite of the people? Yeah, he would he would speak th- with them from above. Yeah, he would t- he would give them lessons as well. Yeah, he did that twelve years old, asking That's them questions. Cool. Saints teach that not that he was asking them questions in the temple to find out because he didn't know he well, he knew everything. The questions he asked were to make th- make them understand the truth. They did yes. not want to see the truth of the revelation. It was to show their ignorance for them to realize, for them to become humble. And it says in in the gospel, and all were amazed with his answers. Yeah. yeah. So he would ask them questions, and he would answer his own questions for them. Yeah. When they didn't know how to answer. So if I mean, you can be a teacher, you can be a you can be a worker, you can be a somebody who has command over many others. I mean, you can be in any state of life. You can be humble in each one of these states. Yes. And uh, and for all of these, you'll find an example in our Lord Jesus Christ. Also, the it's interesting how, of course, in the Holy Family, it's something which always amazed me and enchanted Doctor Prenu as well. That the if you look, because no none of us chose our own parents. The only one who did that was Jesus. I mean, he created his mother. <laughs> and created saint joseph who was his legal father yes. so he, he could have done that however he wanted he could have he could have come like you said the 30 years of age on earth but he chose to come as a baby and put himself through all that he passed but if you analyze the holy family it was a normal family yeah. and the, the least person over there was saint joseph i mean the greatest of all saints was the least person and yet he was the one who gave the orders in the family he was a father yes the that's an example of humility as well yeah because being the father humility is the truth being the father yes. he is the one that has yeah. to give you the orders you had to command you had to even though he knew that that wasn't in in the natural sense the natural and supernatural sense he was the least but being the father he had to yeah. to have the humility to command yes <laughs> the angel when the angel appeared and appeared to him in a dream and told that they should go to egypt F- not uh, flee to Egypt to escape from Herod. Well, the angel could have spoken to Our Lady, who was much more than Saint Joseph. Yes. But no, in that place, Our Lady practiced humility by obeying Saint Joseph, and Saint Joseph practiced hu- humility by giving an order to Our Lady, giving a uh, transmitting God's order to Our Lady. And Our Lord, who was God, who had sent the angel, who Saint Joseph listened to, he was satisfied and just lying in Our Lady's arms. He would not even talk. I mean, he was very young, so. And surely it mustn't have been easy for Saint Joseph to give a command to Our Lady. Imagine that. Yeah. Like, how can I? And it's the gospel. The gospel says, you know, we're supposed to be spoke, speaking about the the hidden life of our Lord. We'll yes. get back to the hidden life of our Lord. Yes. But in the gospel, it says that at that moment, 
Saint Joseph took the baby, the baby and his mother into, into Egypt. That moment is in the middle of the night yeah. when the angel appeared to him. Really? He already yes. wo- woke up. We had to wake up our lady to tell her we have to leave. <laughs> yeah, a wrong aspect, a wrong attitude of humility in this moment would be for Saint Joseph to have said. No, I'm the I'm the least person here, so let them. You decide. Yeah, yeah you decide, and uh, somebody else take the responsibility. And uh, unfortunately, I've seen that happening as well. It's not rare to find people who who use a false humility, a false not true humility, as a pretext to not take the decisions that they're supposed to take, to not do the things that they're supposed to do. Because Saint Joseph, all the times, all the decisions that he had to take, everything that he had to do, if he had to defend our Lord, he would defend our Lord. If he had to fight against uh, somebody who was going to attack Our Lady, obviously he would he would fight. In fact, that was one of the reasons that the some mystics have given the reason why Saint Joseph had to die before the public life of Our Lord was given his mission as Our Lord's guardian. He could not tolerate the crucifixion without entering into a fight, without entering into a physical yes. fight. And that would go against his mission. God gave him the mission of defending Our Lord. So even if he knew that corresponded to the greater plan of greater glory of God, that crucifixion, the redemption of mankind, he could not bear that physically. He had to not be present for that to take place. Impressive. Yes. But then again, that's his role. Then that is humility. But so brothers, yes. let's try to uh, speak about the, the what do we know exactly and how our Lord must have practiced this virtue in our Lord and the Holy Family. Must have, might have practiced this virtue during the hidden years. We know that after the three kings left, the Bible says that they went to Egypt. And then a number of years later, from Egypt, they went back to Nazareth. After Herod had died, another angel appeared. Back, yeah. Exactly, he got another, uh, the angel told him he could go back to Israel, but he didn't want to go to Jerusalem. He went to Nazareth because it was safer. There was another tyrant in Jerusalem at that point. Oh, yes. Herod's son, yeah. So, in now, of course, we are in the realm of meditation. Meditation is this, we are going to try and imagine some facts, what we know, what we can imagine based on the Bible and based on what the mystics have said, etc. So what do you think would have happened in the time that they passed in Egypt? How do you think their life must have been? <laughs> well, that's a hard, it's <laughs> a very hard question to... Uh, interesting, but uh, just for yeah. everyone to know that uh, we just, I don't know if it's published already, but we just finished printing the book of St. Joseph in English. So it's... A yeah, yes, that's true. Uh, I just know, printed, maybe. printed here in Brazil, so I'm sure it's going to be shipped to all the other countries, so it'll be, it'll be oh published yeah. soon. Yeah, in that, in that book, Monsieur Jean, he... Ah, we have a here here Portuguese, but this is the Portuguese one. In that book, this is the Portuguese version, you'll find the same thing in English. Monsieur Jean does meditations on, specifically on the hidden life of our Lord, what things might have happened in Egypt, where they must have, where they ought to have gone, what, how, where the, how was the life between... St. Joseph and Our Lady and the hidden life, all that. He meditates a lot and it's very beautiful. It's based on theological authors, on mystics, and of course meditations, all that put together. And uh, It's really good. But if it's available, we'll leave a link already in the description of the video for those who would like to access it. But brother, let's come back. Egypt, <laughs> trying to escape. The <laughs> I gave him some time. <laughs> and he was trying to save me, but <laughs> he's trying to let me get away. How do you think must have been the life of Our Lord, Our Lady? and St. Joseph in Egypt? Well, for sure, the first thing arriving there, St. Joseph would have to find a place for them to stay. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, he was a carpenter, so he probably had to look for some other carpenter mm. to see if he could help some carpenter in getting some money, at least at the beginning. From And, of course, we have to remember that he d- they, did receive, they did receive the presents from the kings. Yeah, they. I guess they had a One little of, bit to begin with. Exactly, a little bit to begin with. But of course, we had to. We had to find a home to stay in. Yeah, that's even something else for. Yeah, and so another another aspect. An adventure. Almost. Exactly, yeah. an adventure. But even for those that there are people, many people that have to change their lives, yeah. literally change, go from one country to another, yeah. to migrate. Even in that aspect, we have an example in our Lord and Saint Joseph. But what they could have actually done, I think I'm at a, lo- at a loss of ideas of what they could have actually done in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> Where I <laughs> can't even imagine what Egypt was like in that time to, to look for a house in Egypt would, would already be something very hard. Uh, Monsieur Jean imagines in this book, he comments about how he imagined the him, them to have looked for the, the Israelites in Egypt because there was a community of Israelites there. Yes. 
and about how in the beginning most probably because they were incredible saint joseph our lady they were the most perfect couple in all history mm-hmm. and baby jesus was adorable but literally adorable so how very probably they must have called the attention of the people especially the israelites yes. and must have elicited a lot of awe they would have been enchanted but but bible does not speak about a conversion of egypt bible does not speak about so we can suppose that in spite of all the apostles probably at one point there might have been episodes similar to what took place during the public life of our lord in the first moment a lot of sympathy a lot of enchantment and over time a slow rejection because mm-hmm. that's something impressive humility obliged them even in their hidden life to be to give all the glory possible to god so to pray in the most perfect way possible to help those who could whom they could help but to do apostle to speak about all of this in all of this in the first moment we have a uh, a bifurcation in spiritual life mm-hmm. you can admire or you can become jealous possibly after the first moment of admiration they started getting feeling a rejection in egypt as well yes okay. but i have a question i don't know if it's in the book or what i but did jesus and mary and joseph ever uh, were they ever reduced to beggars i don't know if they had this so? that would be something uh, it is i've never had that in none of the fathers of the church not the mystics and quite frankly it does not seem uh, god tries them but never seen that they were reduced to, of course saint joseph literally had to beg for a house but not in the sense that they were a beggar that he was yeah that miserable kind of what yeah. people have the idea of course, of he was yeah. in that in that case because he was in a situation that our lord would be born yeah his his wife's baby was going to be born he needed a house at that, that moment he must have felt what a beggar felt right yeah, <laughs> exactly. he exactly. was he would be willing to pay for it yeah it, it, it wasn't said that he didn't find anybody to give him a, a place says okay. that there is no there is no place for them in the inn in the inn and if you're going for so an inn because you're exactly. expected to pay in, in, so he's expected to pay yeah so of That's course in that sense he he could feel as a beggar because asking asking but nothing yeah. or didn't receive anything but not that he was reduced to to extreme but poverty what would be what would be blasphemous to say is that our lord our lady of saint joseph were ever reduced to this lack of dignity that unfortunately we find in find in people sometimes mm, yeah. that yes. they were filthy or that they were m- miserable but not seen um blessed and catherine emerick in her in the visions that she has mm-hmm. about the passion and death of our lord jesus christ she said that mm-hmm. our lord was so disfigured after the flagellation he was he was thrown on the ground he was he had been bruised he, had, he was bleeding all over he was so 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 disfigured and our lady would not have been capable of recognizing our lord in the multitude the only reason she understood who was her son and imagine already could not recognize his lord only reason she was able to look at our lord and see who he was was because of the dignity of his bearing wow in the middle in that yes. state broken bleeding uh, bruised uh, hungry in everything was wrong he still maintained his dignity so to reduce our lord to a state where he would not be dignified whether he would be imagine him um broken but of a imagine him filthy imagine him with some things which don't correspond to god imagine him dirty that is not that is not that's, that's a catholic yes. spirit yeah cleanliness uh, is godliness they say right uh, yeah. yes <laughs> yes and that is what the saints have thought as well i mean the truly humble saints we didn't find anybody who was we found saints who were very poor but saints who who did not want at least some aspect of beauty some aspect of uh, dignity the word dig- is dignity exactly the exact yeah. word is dignity yeah the they mention about saint bernard for example saint bernard was a saint who was called to react against an excess of luxury which was being brought up in the middle ages because he had a very high vocation middle ages was the age of faith but at one moment there was so to speak a deviation they started having an exaggerated notion of worldly sort of grandeur which is going away from spiritual grandeur that god wanted for them so saint bernard was raised up at this moment to re uh, call them back so his house his monasteries everything had, was very simple was very poor but they were habits which were impeccably white and they the commentators say were saying the uh, bernard that he rejected all forms of beauty rejected he did not use forms of false forms of beauty but when he wrote his writings are so beautiful that it had to escape somewhere his love for beauty had to come out <laughs> had to show up somewhere yes 
the rhymes the poetry the meditation that they're so beautiful that it's very rich literature every saint at some part at some way they manifest the true beauty true grandeur and uh, saint francis of assisi saint francis of assisi was very favorable that the liturgy that the vestments everything should have grandeur yes so in all this we are following our lord i mean our lord jesus christ in his years of life so we can't say that he ever lived as yes a, he had that intrinsic dignity i think that yeah he's not a beggar yeah, exactly the beggar <laughs> in the sense that uh, yeah he's not the, the beggar in the sense that we know a, nowadays yeah. he's not the, a beggar yeah exactly yeah. there's something that's what you said right in egypt they must have surely admired the holy family when they came uh, all the they might have been like a uh, poor and didn't have money or whatever but that thing they might have had a simple presence or simple something in the stature yeah. was enough to to amaze mm-hmm. yeah. to amaze and then after maybe to great envy as well yeah but the first reaction would be amazement but you mentioned envy now brother that that's something very interesting for us when we're commenting about humility and all of humility because the spiritual master say this that one of the main moments one of the or let's put it like this the antidote against pride is admiration and admiration yes. is the opposite of envy because mm. when you see something good when you see something noble when you see something grandiose what is the right attitude for man at that moment he should admire and not start comparing ourselves yes. to that then if you do that you become humble and since that is true virtue and like you said the holy family practice true virtue we can be certain that the holy family saint joseph our lady our lord jesus christ they used to admire a lot admire things that they didn't have Doctor Pini mm-hmm. like to imagine them being passing to Jerusalem, nearly killed, uh, rejected by everybody. They go to the the grotto at Bethlehem to for Father to be born, and then Saint Joseph and Our Lady shortly before Lord's birth, commenting about what had passed through that day, commenting the beautiful palace of Herod. How it must have been, <laughs> because even if they were rejected by the people, if that was beautiful in itself, they would admire it. Yeah, they would love it because that yeah. would give glory to God. and that is why they were humble they admired the three kings they, of course they were they were infinitely more than the three kings mm-hmm. but in those they were kings and they were treated with respect as kings they admired the three kings they admired the yes. shepherds for being good shepherds so that saves us from pride that saves admiration. us from admiration so that's something as well you can imagine in all those aspects i think that's what it is admiration is i remember when this doctor me said that admiration is uh, is forgetting yourself right that yeah. that thing you, you admire and then when you admire you forget yourself yeah. you are happy and for that that god has given somebody else yeah, independent yeah. whether you whether help it's or not. with me or not yeah yeah that uh, our lord jesus christ he admired for example take the case of the the centurion who was who was a pagan who asked his servant to be cured our lord agrees to go to his house and the centurion says No, uh, I'm not worth that you enter under my roof. But I know how a command works. I have many people under me. Mm-hmm. I say to somebody, go, he goes. I say to somebody else, come, he comes. So I know that you have the same command over the universe, over the angels. Just say a word, and my servant shall be healed. Interesting. Yeah. Our Lord said that, and our Lord admired our Lord his faith. Admired his faith. Admired, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Of course, our Lord praised him. If that it was a proud thing to command, that would be the moment for our Lord to accuse. You miserable! How can you ask me for help in an act of pride like this? You're talking about your own command. You should be a uh, become a beggar yourself, and then I'll think about curing you. No, he yeah, admired. admired. He admired a, a good soldier, the one he knew to command, who he was supposed to command, and he admired his faith. To see it actually comes from it's from admiration, ad mirari, to look at. Yeah. yeah, yeah, from from Latin to look at. So when you when you literally look at the others uh, the others virtues. and be happy with the other's virtues interesting yeah and of course that makes you even if not not to imitate in a in a sense that wanting to be the same but as as you admire as you look at and happy with that virtue naturally you start practice that virtue as well yeah mm-hmm. and, that's and when you compare yourself that's when you don't practice that virtue you try to pretend to have that virtue but when you pretend to have that virtue as soon as nobody's looking You don't have that virtue anymore. Yeah, so you never had it. I mean, that was <laughs> fashad. That that didn't mean anything. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. The so when you're actually humble and you look at the other's virtues and you and you admire the other virtues, you start uh, you you receive that virtue as well. 
if you think about it the apostles the apostles who were faithful of course at moments they were weak they fled at the the garden etc but let's talk about the beginning of the vocation when everything was and they were following all of it all enthusiasm they started because of admiration the feasts that we know saint peter admires the the miracle that our lord worked and he said go away from me because i'm a sinner and he realized that somebody more than him he gets enchanted but he's afraid i don't know calls him and treats him well uh saint bartholomew he was thinking about uh a lot of the here is an israelite without any fault with anything false in him he admired no, now here i find somebody who he speaks the truth he understood, yes. he understood how, do, he, how, do, how does he know me yeah. where do mm. where do you know me from somebody who saw my soul like nobody else so that is an act of admiration yes. saint john the baptist had encouraged his disciples to admire our lord and that they would leave him and start admiring our lord more than they would admire him yes. saint john admired our lord so i mean all these people who were faithful and who were humble was was so because they were they were admirative saint mm. john was a perfect example saint john the baptist was the first perfect example of humility he must increase and i must decrease that is perfect humility and yet when our lord asked him to baptize saint john to baptize jesus that would seem like an act of pride but it was not so much so that he accepted when jesus wanted yes he first tried arguing when he saw jesus wanted that he accepted because that is humility that's what god wanted from him Yeah. So you see how we're coming back to humility, right? admiration, humility. It's all. Yeah, these things are very related. related. <laughs> yeah, impressive. <laughs> Because unfortunately, I guess one of the main reasons people struggle to practice humility and they can't is because many people were lied to about what is humility. Yes. Yeah. Looking at our Lord, looking at our Lady, the saints, Saint Joseph, we understand what is humility. That is practicable. the wrong idea of humility takes people away from true humility and then people struggle they suffer they they break themselves so of course we speak about the hidden life of our lord what saint louis de montfort said that our lord the hidden life he did practice was to give glory to god and he was god he was giving glory to himself in the hidden life he gave more glory to god in those 30 years of hidden life than with all his miracles He gave more glory to God in admiring Our Lady and Saint Joseph and mm, being yeah. faithful to them. So it was the moment that, of course, this podcast for the slaves of Mary. It was the moment that he was a slave of Our Lady. Yeah, exactly. of course, not a son. He was a son of Our Lady and doing everything that Our Lady would ask him. Yeah, and Saint Joseph as well. But especially thirty years of submitting himself to Our, our Lady, submitting himself to Our Lord. So that's yeah. another point of humility. Submit yourself. Yeah. to whom you must you should submit yourself exactly and not want the others to submit themselves to yourself to give yeah. to give up our own wishes when we want to do something and somebody else wants to do it if it's not if what the person the other person wants to do isn't against the catholic doctrine or won't do bad for anybody we should do what the other person wants above all when the person That's has a right over you yes. when because god established a, a universe with hierarchy He did not make all all the creatures equal. He did not make all the men equal. I mean, we have we have a bishop, we have a priest, and we have the faithful. In the civil society, we have somebody who governs, somebody who obeys. You and that's how God made the universe. Yeah, that's so how it's in the very nature, right? In in the family, the cause and effect. Your parents caused you. You have you are, you're born in the baby with them. You have, you're depend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did not put in the ten commandments. Be equal to your father and mother. No, honor your father and mother. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so when that does give glory to God, when you respect the authority, was unfortunately very often we find people, and that is a very clear sign of lack of humility. People who are against the hierarchy that God has put in the universe. deep inside it's not it's not because the uh the fact is as long as there is hierarchy doctor explains this that there is a risk of me being under somebody else so i prefer yes. that there was no hierarchy in the universe i would break the order that god has put in the universe so that i would never run the risk of having to obey anybody else can you repeat that because doctor has said that many people unfortunately when they speak about equality but absolute equality not equality before the law understood in the catholic sense but the absolute equality when there should not be any hierarchy in society in anywhere else mm-hmm. it's because they would prefer to be god they would prefer to be above everybody else yes. but when they realize that they can't be in that place then i would rather that there would not be any hierarchy destroy everything so oh. at least i won't have anybody above me it's not for me yes. to be down it's so that nobody be above me 
understand. Yeah. It's a very, very sinister attitude. They say that now I'm lost. Whether it was, I think it was Julius Caesar. That yes. is one of these. Uh, yes. You know the fact exactly. Yes, I don't remember the name of the city that he was from. Apollo. If, if one of these. I don't uh, remember. What, let's say it's Apollo. I don't remember. Yeah. He said, "I prefer to be the first in Rome." No. No. The, sorry. I prefer to be the first in Apollo than the second in Rome. Ooh. <laughs> now, being second in Rome was something immensely higher than being the chief of a tiny lost village somewhere. Yes. But it was so 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 much higher. But to be second in Rome, but that didn't bother him. What he could not bear was to have somebody above him. Exactly. I think it was him as well. They found him one night crying. That one one looking at a star, he's cry, cry, crying. And what happened? Why are you so dejected? I mean, he was the emperor of the world practically. Why are you so dejected? No, I'm dejected because see those stars, they don't obey me. My so goodness. That that yes, that is a sort that is a pride which is properly satanic. Yes. yes it, things have reached a point where it, the fact is not that it's more than I having. Uh, there should not be anybody above me, nobody who escapes from my influence. That is a sinister form of pride. Yes. And like you said, the antidote for it is admiration. The person admires, and the person is willing to see something which somebody else has more. Then we are following our Lord Jesus Christ. We are following our Lady. We are following Saint Joseph. And then we are free from pride. So it's the opposite. The opposite would be if you if you could imagine uh, a Catholic Caesar. Yeah. He would probably be joyful someday at night because he said, "I found somebody that doesn't have to obey me. Who are the stars? <laughs> Everybody else obeys me, but the stars they don't obey exactly, me. Exactly. Yeah. God God obliged me. God gave me this mission. I accept my cross of commanding whatever I have to command. The whole territory that I have to command. The whole world at that yeah. time. The and Roman em- exactly. The Roman Empire was basically yeah. the whole world. <laughs> But, whole known world. but I'm glad that he has reserved part of it for himself. That not everything I know, and I can I can reduce myself. I can give glory to God in that sense. That, and of course, it's an illusion. I mean, any aspect, any idea of glory that we have, which breaks away from this, is mere illusion. You find sometimes people enchanted at the that sometimes they've become rich or their 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 company is doing well or something went well and. I don't know something went well they, uh, in their life, in their college, in their work. You find an excess of pride in the person. Of course, that is not humility either. The person is satisfied with himself, forgetting that that what he has, he has received, and not being faithful to what God has given him. To be faithful was to remember, yeah, this has come from God. I'll practice this, whatever I have, following yeah. God. But you find um, there was a case of another Roman emperor who, while he was being acclaimed as God. By the Colosseum, if all is all the people acclaiming him, suddenly uh, Roman emperors were they were considered gods. They were considered yeah, yes. they called themselves gods. They had the right of divinity. That's where Caesar Augustus. Augustus mm-hmm. is the, the title of, of deity. deity. Yeah. Uh, and suddenly he clutches his stomach and he falls down on his knees, and he s- screams while dying. No? He died. He had some attack, and he didn't know what it was. Uh, I accepted the dignity of being a god. And now God has reminded me that I'm, I'm a mere mortal, and He says that and dies. Because no matter how great you are, what we have on this earth, it's going to last uh, <laughs> 70 years, 80 years. <laughs> I mean, and that's another antidote for humility as well. To remember how how uh, fallible we are, how how weak we are, how weak we are. Well, yeah. The strongest, the healthiest, won't won't last. <laughs> More than 80 years, okay. Maybe might last 120 years, but... 120 years, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're the strongest and the healthiest, but... Yeah, that's it. it. That's it. I mean. <laughs> and, the, and the last 40 will probably won't be in the best conditions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that as well. Speaking about that, I don't know if this uh, really matters, but... Uh, when we are c- uh, on the way here to the yeah. to the studio, I was talking with Brother Rajiv about this... Uh, about uh, why about going back to the hidden life, right? The yeah. hidden life. <laughs> why didn't the why didn't the the apostles why didn't the evangelists right say something about it? Why is it hidden? Why is it a hidden life? Yeah, they could have. I don't know. Uh, our lady could have told them something about it, and they could have written it down. Uh, it would have made our life so, um, so much easier. I mean, <laughs> 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 it would have made the podcast so much easier. Yeah, if we would have <laughs> something to talk about. <laughs> concrete but facts. I don't know. I didn't realize it that time when you spoke about it. But now, uh, since you said about this humility, 
uh, humility is is knowing uh, is seeing that your dependence on others, your 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 lack of sufficiency. I mean, you yeah. Yeah, you, you that you you're weak and you uh, you can make mistakes, and maybe God permitted this this kind of. Uh, Gap. Silence. It's a gap. It's yeah, basically a gap yeah. in the gospel. Silence. Not only in the hidden life, but in so many other things. Like yeah. the assumption of Mary could have been explicitly you put in the, in the Bible, and, but God kind of left that out, and he's, he uh, he kind of um, said, "No, let you the, the church take care of it. They can let them yeah. uh, realize that they uh, that n- men are not sufficient without the church." Exactly. Yeah. You some things, some truths. Uh, Op- although they are apparently contradictory, God still wins over. It is, I mean, it's God who's conducting the church. He 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 got the dogma of uh, immaculate conception, the assumption, and uh, and no, it didn't depend on anybody's genius and anybody's uh, writing it down. I mean, yeah. it's like um, this. In spite of these gaps, God still got his way through. God his way through, yes. and it's like for the ch- it's a lesson for the church, I think, of this. Uh, that we don't have everything. We don't have everything easy. With uh, yeah, uh, we depend on God. God, is the Holy Spirit. We have to depend on the Holy Spirit. Lesson, most of all, for for the for men, for us faithful. For when I say men, of course, I mean all human beings, men and women. But it is a lesson for all of us that without the church, we'd be lost. Yeah, lesson for the church that of course, yes. the church is the mystical spouse of Christ, and as long as she is always faithful to Christ. As as long as she has Christ, she doesn't have to know everything absolutely clear right from the beginning. Exactly. There yeah. are mysteries, and it's not the church is not afraid of that. The church is not afraid of mysteries. The church is not afraid of. It's not. Exactly. And that is something. Of, uh, that has something to do with humility, right? The yeah. Humility is that yeah, it's not. I'm, I don't have everything with me. I, I don't have. I'm not God. Recognize. <laughs> I'm not God. I'm not omniscient. There are things that I don't know. That's the truth. Humility, in a certain uh, one of the definitions of humility, is that humility is to recognize yourself as a creature. Because deep inside, whenever we make an act of pride, in mm. some point we want to put ourselves in God's place. Humility. I'm a creature. There are things I know, things I will know someday, and things maybe that some marvels God reserved for eternity. I may discover after my death. Of course, I'm not going to be bored in heaven. Every day I'm going to have to learn things, new things, new marvels. In fact, it's theological that not even Our Lady, in all her glory, nor Saint Joseph, knows everything. Every moment in heaven, they learn more, they discover more. Yeah, and so God there are mysteries infinite. for them. Exactly, there are mysteries for them as well. So, uh, in a certain mm. sense, the hidden life of our Lord in itself is a life of humility. It's an example of humility for us. It's yeah, uh, the very fact that it's a hidden. Life. It's hidden. It's a lesson that we have to be humble. And it's actually just thought about this now. It's actually a proof that the gospels are true. And why is mm-hmm. that? Because who would write the gospels? If you were to invent the gospel, would you leave the hidden life there? Would you would you not write the hidden Interesting, life? Interesting, yeah. Would you leave yeah. a uh, eight, <laughs> 20, I don't know how many exactly. Invent yeah. something more, right? Just <laughs> exactly. Why didn't, why didn't you write something down? Yeah, if you want to invent if, that. If you're going to invent it, why would you write, okay, so he was lost in the temple, he was found, and then 30 years later, yeah. he started And that, that's the gospel which mentions the finding in the temple, others don't. Not even mention exactly, that. Exactly, some yeah. don't even mention it. So, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If it was... Humanly speaking, everything is wrong in the gospel. Humanly yeah. speaking, yes. <laughs> because it was done with the divine wisdom. Yeah. It was done with, uh, of course, the person could have made our Lord appear much more grandiose in a in a superhero style of uh, power, which would not be humble, which would not be truly grandiose. Show that uh, the gospel shows the pain that our Lord went through, shows his suffering, shows his difficulties, all these things which they didn't have to show. But that is the truth. There are mysteries which are not clear, which would give occasion for people to accuse a lot of wrong things. All of that is left in because that's what God inspired. That's what the gospel writers wrote, and that's it. Yeah, like you're saying, that's yes. a very good proof of the, <laughs> the truth, of, the truth of the gospel. Also, the humility of the evangelists, because they were faithful to yes. the Holy Spirit, who inspired them to write something. They wrote that. They did not start. No, let's try to make it as best as I can. Let me try to add something here to so that so that nobody tells something in the future. You know, the Holy Spirit inspired me to write this. I like that. Simple yes. as that. I guess if you look yes. at it, everything in the church is a lesson in humility. Just to, it's just for us to look at the church, look at the Bible, look at life of the saints and be faithful to that. Understanding through humility. 
So I think that is a very good podcast. We've been talking for a, <laughs> a long oh, time now. Yeah. So shall we end with a Hail Mary asking the grace of true humility for all of us in this year, 2024. Also for all those who are watching us who des- desire this grace, we invite all of you to pray together this Hail Mary with us. So shall we? Yes, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Our Lady of Fatima, pray, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Salve Maria. Salve Maria. Salve Maria.